It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. It was so hard. It, it, um, your energy level isn't as high. You're tired when you're pregnant, you know. And this was my first child in 13 years, because I had a son who was 13 years mm -hmm. old when my daughter was born. Right. The body just was going through it. It's so much easier to pretend that you are pregnant when you're not than to be, pre to be pregnant and pretend yeah. that you're not. Yeah, so physically, it was very difficult. How about spiritually? Well, no, spiritually, that's a different matter. Spiritually, it was a um, very high time, very powerful time. Uh, it was a very still time, a very centered and focused time. Okay. There's something about creation going on within one's body that you have nothing to do with. There's something about feeling that. There's something that happens during pregnancy if a woman is sensitive to it. I mean, actually, it goes on all the time. But during pregnancy, you're very aware of that presence, mm -hmm. that divinity. So stop and think for a second. What, what do you think the effect was on the unborn baby of all the laughter during rehearsals, the script meetings, the taping, people laughing, laughing, laughing. You know, the baby can hear it. Well, she laughs a lot. She's always laughing. Mm -hmm. She wakes up laughing. She laughs all day. She laughs in her sleep. Mm -hmm. She did that from the time she was born. Mm -hmm. She's a very happy little person. And the third part of my question is, visually, what was it like to do a television series while you're pregnant not wanting the people at home to know you're pregnant. Well, first of all, I mean, women who are mothers could look at me and tell because my face <laughs> oh, looked like, look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, <laughs> it was it was difficult, but the the writers and the wardrobe supervisor are very innovative people. They dug holes in the bed. Uh, I hid behind a giant teddy bear. I hid behind the refrigerator door. They raised the counter in the kitchen. I carried towels. I carried coats. I carried boxes of flour. I carried everything except Bill. Mm. So, you mm. know, and I did Uncle Tom's Cabin when right. I was pregnant, That's too. Awesome. And that was very hard mm. because it was very hot down there. Oof. So now not, the baby's uh, nine months old. We're, mm -hmm. in, we're into, an, into a new season. How are you uh, adjusting to returning to baby motherhood after 13 years? It's amazing. I find that I have energy to do anything that is needed for her. And not only do I have the energy for it, I want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, just now, I am making the rule for myself that I really am truly going to let her nurse take care of her through the night because I really do need the rest after so many months of not sleeping through the night, it, it wears you down. And now uh, that I am working and there's other work to do, I must be ready for it and I have to have energy, so I have to sleep. And any, any problem in your mind about being a super mother, trying to do the job perfectly, take care of the husband perfectly, take care of the baby perfectly, take care of the house perfectly? Some women try to confront it all and, and, and just realize they can't do it and feel guilty because of that. You have to start with yourself, you know. You really do. You, you, there's something about there's something about being a mother and having a career and and uh, the way we're reared, the way women are reared. You see, men are fathers and they have their careers. Uh, men are fathers and they travel and do whatever they need to do. Men are fathers and they take jobs that take them away from their homes and their families. But for a woman to do this, it's like, oh, oh my God. You have to start with yourself and accept the circumstances of your life and accept them as your own. Accept them as your own creation. Accept them as your own karma. Accept them as your own truth, as your own work that you are given to do in this lifetime and deal with it from there. And start with yourself. Start by taking time with yourself to just sit quietly in a day, to just be still and not let all the concepts and all the ideas and all the mental constructs wear you down. When your daughter is 14 years old, we're going to be looking into a new century. Ooh. I know, it's kind of scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether or not, be, because obviously times have changed and changing mm. very, very quickly, I, I'm interested in your telling us how you may raise your daughter differently than your mother raised you, simply because times are so different. I you. will not raise my daughter differently than my mother raised me. The rearing I got from my mother 
words cannot express. I could live in any time, I could live in any country, I could live on any planet, and I would be fine. What was the key? The key. What did your mother know? <sighs> what truth was coming through your mother that's mm. going to come through you to your daughter? My mother gave us aphorisms to learn as children. And the one that I, there are two that stand out foremost in my mind. One is the inner reality creates the outer form. I learned this when I was in grade school. I was very young. And the other is the universe bears no ill to me. I bear no ill to it. These aphorisms will be taught to your daughter. Yes. Absolutely. They've already been taught to your... My son. Your son. That's right. Mm. What I think I'm really getting at there is the opportunities facing your daughter, your daughter will be greater when she's, say, out of college than they were for you and much greater than they were for your mother and we don't even have to begin to consider the differences with, uh, you know, her grandmother. Again, I understand what you're saying. I would teach my daughter to look within herself first before career projections, mm -hmm. before accepting ideologies and theories and philosophies of near and distant traditions, I would tell her to look within herself to discover her own truth and to live in the experience of constant awareness of that truth within. Mm.